Hi, my name's Andy, and this is part five of my first Raspberry Pi game, where we're going to write uh, your first ever computer program on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, the computer program is a really simple little game that uh, is going to display a green thing, and if you have to quickly press a button if it, if you see a green thing, uh, not press a button if you see a red thing. Um, last time, uh, which was part four, we made um, a blank screen appear, um, and a window pop up with a blank screen in it. Um, nothing else. This time we're going to put some actual writing on the screen. You are going to be impressed. Uh, check out the blog post. Here's my magic pointing. Uh, it's got loads of information there, hopefully uh, easier to consume if you get lost. Uh, and it also has a link to uh, uh, what your redgreen.py file should look like um, at uh, the end uh, of this lesson, this part. So um, <clears throat> check that out. So let's get back to our Raspberry Pi, see how it's looking. So we've got Leafpad open, we've got LX Terminal open at the bottom there. So this is how our program looked um, at the end of last time. We made a screen, so we, op we op opened up a window, um, and then we added this code to wait. Um, so we've got an empty screen, and then we wait until something happens. And some even someone moving the mouse is enough to make it stop. We'll fix that sometime, but not yet. Um, and this time we're going to put some writing on the screen, but just before we do that, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that just make our life slightly easier. So first thing, go to the very top of the file. Very top. Don't leave a blank line first, it has to be the absolute first line of the file and type this. Hash, or, or pound if you're an American, and then exclamation mark, or exclamation point if you're an American, uh, and then type this. Forward slash, USR, slash ENV, Sorry, usr slash bin slash env space python. So what we're doing here is we're telling um, our Raspberry Pi that this program is a Python program. So instead of um, having to run it by typing Python and then its name, um, one, once we've finished with our, our tricks, we'll be able to run it directly and uh, the Raspberry Pi will just know it's a Python program. So the first thing is this line, which just says um, uh, run this program using Python. Um, save it. File save. I'll just click, I just press Control S. I do that compulsively. Okay. So uh, once you've saved it, um, go to LX Terminal, and then to um, what we're going to do is tell your Raspberry Pi um, that it's allowed to run this program directly instead of just passing it to another program, which is the Python program. So what we type is this: chmod, chmod, and then a plus, well a space, and then a plus, and then an X. And then the name of the program, which is redgreen.py. So chmod plus x, redgreen.py, press return. If all went well, absolutely nothing will happen, which is uh, the way of things on Linux and Unixes. And now, if we want to run our program, um, we can do it a different way. Instead of typing python redgreen.py like we were before, we can just type dot slash, which means look in this directory. Dot slash just means this directory. And then the name of the program, redgreen.py. And press return. You have to wait a little while because the Pi is not the fastest thing. And you'll see that our program's run. It's popped up our blank window. So press a key to make it go away. And there it goes. So no longer do we have to type python redgreen.py. We can type the shorter and more meaningful dot slash redgreen.py, which means run our program. And it knows that our program is a Python program. It sorts it all out for us. Just a little trick. Um, nothing to it. You didn't need to do it. Just We've got to do it sometime, it's fun. Okay, so let's start off with um, uh, the real work to make some writing appear on the screen. The first thing we need to do is we need to look at this line with the screen size. Um, before we were happy with just the screen size just being a list of two numbers and we didn't need the numbers individually. Now I want the numbers individually, I'm going to split this up a little bit. So I'm going to type this screen width, screen underscore width equals 640, screen underscore height equals 480, and then instead of repeating this information again, uh, which would be a waste and might cause mistakes, um, I'm going to make the screen size by building it up out of screen width and screen height. So screen size is a list of the width and the height, um, but now we've made new variables called screen width and screen height, which hold on to the, um, the width and the height separately, because we're going to need them later. Um, and I've made screen size out of those variables. Just as a reminder, a variable uh, sounds clever, but actually it's just a thing with a name that holds on to something. 
Okay, so we've made screen size out of those two other variables now. Uh, the next thing we need to do, um, because we're going to use them later, is make two more variables, but put absolutely nothing in them. So this is how that's going to work. Screen equals none. None is a special word in Python, which means uh, there's nothing at all there. But there will be at some point, presumably. And I'm going to make another one called ready text. So this is the writing. Are you getting the idea? And again, ready text is going to be equal to none, which means make this variable, but don't put anything in it. Or put, put none in it, put nothing in it. Um, <clears throat> so we've made those variables. Now let's go and look at our start function. We're going to add a bit of stuff to it. What we're going to do is we're going to um, tell the start function about those variables we've just made. So let's, let's type in, I'll explain. We use the word global. And then we type the names of the uh, two variables we've just made, ready text and screen, with a comma in between them. And what this is doing is telling the start function, when you're dealing with something called screen or something called ready text, don't deal with it just inside your function, inside you, the start function, but uh, deal with the ones that we know about from the outside. So global means it's uh, visible everywhere. Um, those, those two things, screen and ready text. Um, I want you to use the ones that are um, outside of you, not not just ones that are inside. If we hadn't put global there, we might end up dealing with something called screen or ready text, um, uh, but it, which is not actually the same thing as those things we made at the top. Um, they just happen to have the same name. So you'll notice a few lines down, we set screen to be um, to be the window that we're working with. And we want to make sure that the screen that we are that we set there is the same screen that we we made outside because we're going to use it in other places. So global just means make it the same as the one from the outside. Okay, so once we've done that, um, we're going to do a couple more things. The first thing is we're going to make a font. So remember one, two, three, four spaces to get to the same place so that we know that this line is the um, part of the same function, this start function. We're going to make a font. A font is a way of writing writing. And um, we're going to call our font font. And we're going to make it like this. Pygame dot font dot capital F font. It means make a new object, uh, uh, which is a, a type of, which is a font. And then we're going to type none. And then screen height, which is the variable we defined up above divided by 5. So let me explain this a little bit. So this stuff means look inside pi... whoops... look inside... look inside pi game. The dot means look inside. Find something called font. Look inside that and find something called capital F font um, which um, we call and uh, uh, you can think of this thing as a function. Actually, it's a, a thing that makes an object called a font. So we're going to make a font, and the way we're going to make it um, is we're going to pass in none, which means we don't care what font it is. It could be Arial, it could be Verdana, it could be Times New Roman. Uh, for the moment, we don't care. So we just say none for I don't care. Just pass in nothing there. Uh, and then the next argument, so um, here there are two arguments to this function, two pieces of information being passed into this uh, this thing, this font. Not really a function, but let's call it a function for now. Um, uh, and the second argument is the screen height variable that we, we created up higher up. Uh, but we're doing a sum on that screen height. Instead of just um, passing in the screen height as it is, we're doing a divided by. So this is a forward slash and then a 5. And that means divided by 5. We don't use the divide sign or anything like that. Um, this is supposed to look a bit like a fraction. You've got screen height on top and 5 underneath, so screen height divided by 5. Lots of programming languages have a slash like that to mean divide. It's a bit weird if you're used to writing a division sign, but um, I haven't got a division sign on my keyboard. It's a lot easier to use a slash. Uh, uh, in fact, division sign won't work, so don't try. Okay, so um, type four spaces for our next line. So we've made a font, uh, which we're going to use to make some writing. So here's where we make some writing. This variable, ready text, which we've created higher up and we've said is global, so that we're, what we're doing here is modifying something that um, is going to leak out of this function into the rest of the program. So ready text equals, so we're changing what this variable is pointing at, um, font, which is the object we've just made, this font object, and we're calling a function on font called render. And what we're asking it to render is the word ready. 
passing in a 1, which you can ignore. And then we're going to give it a colour. Let's make our font smaller yet again, so that we can see what we're doing here. So I'm going to do it, see whether that does it. So the colour we want is white. Let's get rid of some spaces, alright? You should always have loads of spaces in your code, but let's get rid of a couple just so we can fit it on. So, we're making, we're modifying the variable ready text by saying ready text equals something. And the thing that we're saying it should be equal to um, is the answer that comes back when we call this function render on the font object. So render means draw, a, a draw into a picture. So we're saying take this writing, the writing that we're passing in is this thing in quotes, just like in the hello world program we wrote, where we put a string of characters in quotes to say hello world. Here we put a string of characters in quotes saying ready. Um, and then something else which you don't have to care about and then um, the color that we want you to draw it so the color we want is white please so make an image put it inside ready text and that image should be the word ready written in white easy right okay so what do we do next well now that we've got this image this picture which is um, the word ready written in white we can draw it on the screen and the way we do that is we modify the ready screen function, which is where all the magic is going to happen. So we're going to do it like this. We're going to make another variable inside ready screen. Remember, this function gets called further down. Let me scroll down and just show you. Remember, all these functions don't actually run until we get to here. So we say start, which is the bit we've just been doing, and then we say ready screen. So that's where we get to. That's how we get to here. So we're going to run this ready screen function. We're going to make a variable with text pause. And we're going to set it to be ready text dot get root. And then an open bracket. So we're making a variable called text pause. The way we make it is we look inside the thing ready text that we made up above for a function called get rect. Um, and this text pause is going to store where on the screen we want to draw our piece of writing. So get rect. Um, it, that's not the end. Um, we've got a lot more to write, but we can't fit it all onto this line. There's too much. So what I've done is I've put a bracket and I haven't closed it yet. And Python knows if you've put a bracket and you haven't closed it yet, you haven't finished with this line. You might be starting onto another line physically in the text editor, like I am here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We might be moving on to another line in the text editor, but in, as far as Python's concerned, this is all one thing. It's like one sentence. Um, in a piece of English. So uh, all of this line is just about making this text pause thing, which is going to be where the text appears on the screen. But it's a complicated line, so I've broken it into separate lines. The reason Python is okay with that is because we've got this um, bracket which hasn't closed yet, so Python knows you haven't finished yet. So we're going to type this. Center x equals screen dot get width divided by 2, and then a comma another line just the same level of indentation center y equals screen dot screen dot get height divided by two with no comma finally one two three four we're going to finish off the line by closing the bracket so we're calling the get rect function and the the end of the get rect function call is on this line fourth down in between, we've got two arguments being passed, two pieces of information being passed to the get rect function. One is this lot, and one is this lot, and there's a comma in between them. It's all on separate lines, but you can think of it as all one thing. So, the other thing to notice about this, um, this code we've written, is instead of just passing in this sum, which incidentally is halfway across the screen, it's the width of the screen divided by two, and the height of the screen divided by two. So these two numbers are going to be um, the amount of pixels it takes it, it costs you to get halfway across the screen, the amount of pixels it takes you to get halfway down the screen. But notice, instead of just passing them into get rect, what we've done is we've given them names. So uh, inside this function call, we've got something that looks like we're making a variable, but we're not. What we're doing is saying the the argument that we're passing, the piece of information we're passing is center x and the next piece of information we're passing is center y so we're telling the get rect function 
uh, which arguments we're passing. The reason we're doing this is get rect can take all kinds of different arguments. Um, and we're, we're passing these two, but it, we could have passed all kinds of other things. So it needs to be told which arguments we're passing. Whereas with functions we've seen before, like set mode, um, it was, it's clear to set mode that this argument is the screen size. There's not loads and loads of other arguments it could be. In, uh, in the case of get rect, get rect could, can take all kinds of different arguments. So we're telling it, um, we want the center of our, rect, of our text to be halfway across the screen in the x direction and the center of our text in the y direction we want to be halfway down the screen. So now inside text pause we've actually got a rectangle uh, or the locations of the corners of a rectangle uh, which tells Pygame where to draw something. We haven't actually drawn it, we're going to do that now. Here's how we draw it. One, two, three, four. So notice by the way we can have a blank line and we, that doesn't mean we leave the function. So we're still inside this function called ready screen um, because the line here still has four spaces in it and, there, and the only lines in between were empty. If we'd made a line in between here, if we'd made a line here saying print hello, let's just do it. That would mean we'd got to the end of ready screen and then this line wouldn't, wouldn't make any sense. How can you carry on with ready screen when you've already finished it? So we're not doing that. Um, we're carrying on with ready screen. So uh, just to make the point again, the way Python knows you're, whether you're inside a function or you've finished it is the number of spaces at the beginning or the number of tabs at the beginning. So you have to be really, really careful that all the lines that are in this function start with these four spaces like this, text pause, and here, four spaces at the beginning. So here's how we write something onto the screen. We say screen.blit. Then we say um, what image you want to draw on the screen. So in this case, the image you want to draw is this thing called ready text. And then where do you want to draw it? Which is this variable we've just made called text pos. So the name blit, uh, comes from the, the dawn of computing history. Uh, it means write, it means draw, draw an image. Um, why it's called blit is, uh, uh, lost in the mists of time. There's a, there's a link in the blog if you're interested in finding out about it. So now we've done it. We've drawn our writing on the screen. Um, but the last thing we need to do is tell Pygame um, I finished with all my drawing. Um, now show the drawing that I've been doing. So what, how we do that is this: pygame dot display dot flip. Um, so flip um, is a reference to the fact that actually there are two screens uh, underneath behind the scenes. Uh, there's the screen we're drawing on and the screen that we're looking at. And when you say flip, it takes the screen that you're drawing on, and makes it the screen you're looking at. So you can draw quite happily as much as you want, and you won't see it until you say flip. That suddenly Pygame will show everything you've been doing. Um, it's quite useful for if you've got lots of complicated drawing to do. We've done a very simple bit of drawing, which is just writing a bit of text. Okay, uh, all kinds of waffling, but I believe we have finished. So, save it, file, save. Go to LX Terminal and type dot slash red green dot pi. Are you ready? Is this going to work? Look at that! We've got a black screen with white writing on it saying ready and we can make that go away by moving the mouse, clicking the mouse or pressing a key. Let's do it. So if you got that far, well done. You've done um, your first bit of graphics programming um, and next time I think we'll be looking at uh, how to get something no, we won't. Before before that, next time we'll be learning some of the most uh, interesting and difficult uh, concepts in programming uh, to make uh, make the window not disappear when you move the mouse. Only disappear when you click something or press a key. So uh, see you next time.